everyone's concerned about the cost of living these days. Recently, the Centre for Future Work published an important study on the causes of inflation in Australia, and it had some surprising results. Our starting point was simple. It is companies that decide how much they're going to charge for the goods and services they produce. And it turns out they've been doing much more than just passing on their own higher costs. They've been adding an extra margin to fatten their own profits. Over and above their own costs, they're adding $160 billion a year extra, to be precise. And that's made inflation noticeably worse. By our calculations, excess corporate profits account for about 69% of the additional inflation that Australia has experienced since the COVID pandemic. Wages only account for 18% and other factors about 13%. Without those higher profits, inflation in Australia would have been about half as fast as it has been since the pandemic. And then we wouldn't have to deal with these painful high interest rates that have been jacked up to try to bring inflation down. Our report got some good coverage in Australia. And now there's growing evidence from other countries too that high corporate profits have been the leading cause of inflation since the pandemic from America, from the EU, from Britain, and from Canada. Even some central banks are now acknowledging the role of high profits in causing inflation. But not ours in Australia. So far, the Reserve Bank has been totally silent on the issue of profits and inflation. We've also heard some counter-arguments to our claim about the role of profits in driving high inflation from powerful places like the Business Council or even the RBA itself. One of those counter arguments, they say that the profit boom is only due to the mining sector and that somehow mining profits don't count. That's a very weird argument when you think about it. Mining is a huge industry in Australia. It accounts for most profits now and most of our exports. So how can we say that mining profits aren't part of the problem? They absolutely are. But the claim that all of the increase in profits has been concentrated only in the mining sector is false. Profits in non-mining industries are also up substantially. From 2019, before the pandemic, to 2022, the most recent data that we have, profits in the mining sector have soared by $132 billion a year. But profits in non-mining industries are also up strongly by about $50 billion a year. Even small business profits are up by about $46 billion a year. So in mining and non-mining industries alike, companies are not just passing on their own higher costs. They're taking advantage of the crisis and uncertainty that the pandemic caused to jack up prices and fatten their own profits. We pay for that through higher inflation and we see it in all industries including Qantas, supermarkets, banks, and others. So the evidence is clear. The surge in profits that has gone hand in hand with the acceleration of inflation is being felt across the economy. And you and I are paying for it in higher prices every day. A second counter argument to our report on the profit price spiral comes from free market economists. They say it's not possible for companies to cause inflation through higher prices because the forces of competition will ensure that their prices are fair. In their theory, if a company increases its prices too much, consumers will just go to another supplier and that will discipline the industry and keep prices at a fair level. So then the price of any product will automatically equal its cost of production, including labor, resources, other inputs, and the actual cost of capital used in production. The problem is this theory about perfect competition doesn't actually apply in the real world. Firms do not just accept a going market price for what they sell. Firms have influence over how much they charge for their products and they set their prices accordingly. Other economists have acknowledged that competition is not perfect and that companies do have leeway over how much they charge for the stuff they sell. And there's a whole theory called markup pricing that explains why and how companies can charge above and beyond the costs that they paid to produce their goods and services. 
And there are several factors that explain how big that profit margin can be. One of them is industry concentration. If there's only one or a few companies dominating an industry, they can charge a higher markup. Another is the relative bargaining power of companies and the workers who produce the goods and services. If workers do not have a union or strong labor protections, labor costs will be lower and the markup will be bigger. Supply chains can also affect the markup. If there's disruptions or shortages in supplies of key inputs, then firms can charge more in a situation of shortage. Finally, consumer demand and expectations will also affect the markup. If consumers are desperate or we have pent up demand for essential goods and services, then the markup will rise. After the pandemic, many of these factors shifted in ways that allowed companies to increase their markup and hence collect more profits. Supply chains around the world were disrupted by the lockdowns and transportation bottlenecks. Pent up demand from consumers who couldn't shop for several months allowed companies to increase their markups. And then the energy price shock after the war in Ukraine allowed energy companies to really increase their markups, even on products that were made and used in Australia. All of those things together meant profits reached record highs and prices took off. In short, companies saw a chance to fatten their profit margins and they took it. So we have seen profits in Australia grow to their highest share of GDP ever almost 30% of GDP going to corporate profits last year. The bottom line, it is possible for companies to set their own prices and fatten their own profit margins if macroeconomic conditions allow them to do it. They saw an opportunity after the pandemic to increase their markups and they took it. And the result has been the takeoff of inflation and the cost of living crisis that is challenging millions of Australians. Economic theory can explain this and the data confirms it. Most of the increase in prices that we've seen since COVID is the result of higher profit margins. Now the policy implications of this are clear. Number one, we can't blame workers for inflation. Unlike the old theories, we cannot say this is due to wages or unions or unemployment that's too low. Secondly, we have to support workers and low-income Australians to keep up with inflation and protect their standard of living until the true problem is solved. Number three, we have to do what we can to bring down profit margins that are impacting on inflation. Price caps in certain strategic industries like housing or energy make sense. Windfall profits taxes can capture some of those excess profits and redistribute them to average Australians to help them cover their costs. Finally, we could take measures to increase the level of competition in key industries to reduce excess profits and support workers to get a better share of the value added in each industry through their own wages and benefits. At a bare minimum, at least we have to be honest about what has caused the problem of inflation and make sure we aren't blaming the victims. Workers did not cause inflation. Workers are suffering because of inflation. And the true culprits are companies that have taken advantage of an unprecedented health and economic emergency to increase their own profits higher than they've ever been before. That's wrong and it should be challenged.